Hello, you're listening to the Saluki Games Cast. This is the single greatest podcast coming from this corner of the communication building on SIU's campus. We guarantee it. Oh, you're coming out, isn't it queer? <laughs> <laughs> I am taking Johnny down. <laughs> <laughs> He knows what he did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this is episode 64 for December 8th, 2023. My name is Justin Young. This is Alicia Utech. Alicia, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. A little, little stressed. I'm making the drive home this afternoon and into the overnight. So a little stressed trying to make sure I get everything packed. And I'm a couple of friends are driving with me. So... We're going to take shifts, which is nice, but it means I have to wait on them, which is stressful. <laughs> <laughs> Understandably, yeah. it'd be a little stress with that. Um, this is Mario Sanders. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. It's a stressful week just with all the stuff heading into finals, but... That's... Are you also stressed out by Alicia's friends and when they'll show up? <laughs> yeah, I, Alicia's friends, you are not stressing me out. So, you know, if you've got that going for you. But Justin, one thing that would actually be really helpful right now really sort of like lift the mood. Are there any great deals for <laughs> any any of us this week to look into? I mean, technically the Xbox Series X is still on sale for $350. <laughs> okay. Well, there we go. Um, I'm assuming that uh, <laughs> I'm assuming that OJ Duncan picked up his Xbox Series X. Yes, yes I did right after I left here. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. That's a great deal for you. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. That's the only one I've uh, paid any attention to because I was kind of like, is this going to last? Are they still going to be doing this in a week? Mm -hmm. Like how, you know, um, we even talked about last week, is this leading up to something at the Game mm -hmm. Awards? It did not seem to be. <laughs> um, it just seems like they cut $150 off the price of that thing for Christmas. And, you know, I think, Mario, you said it last week. If I'd bought one on Black Friday, I'd be <laughs> about I'd that. go return the one I bought on Black Friday and rebuy it. <laughs> um, I don't know what the I don't remember what the, the price was, but I'm seeing that the Series S is now selling for two fifty. Has yeah. that always been about that price? I don't well, remember what I paid for when I got mine. Yeah, it was three hundred. Um, the five hundred uh, gigabyte model is uh, has been three hundred, and then they introduced that one terabyte model mm -hmm. that was selling at three fifty, mm -hmm. which is the same price sure. as the Series X now, <laughs> yeah. which is insane. Do mm -hmm. not buy that. Buy the Series X mm -hmm. <laughs> at that price. Uh, but I will say that the Series S you've been able to find on sale, mm -hmm. um, so it you've, we've seen more steep discounts on that over the past couple of years than certainly the Series X. Um, but yes, if you're if you're going to buy an Xbox system at three fifty, make it the X <laughs> right now. And that's been Justin's great deal of the week. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be back next week with <laughs> some other zany deal to cost my friends money they do not have. <laughs> One other great deal though that Justin did not take the bait. Gollum is for the Xbox is ten dollars at GameStop right now. So you know, I'm just saying. Oh man! Look, well, OJ, you just got an Xbox, right? Yeah. <laughs> For all you Xbox buyers out there, I'm just saying I sat through Mortal Kombat one on the Switch. It's someone else's <laughs> job to get going. <laughs> Look, get me an Xbox, and then I will. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, ten dollars <laughs> worth ten dollars. Yeah. I feel like that's an experience worth ten dollars. It might be I a miserable so. one, but I, you know, like I, I was. I, like I on this podcast, there is evidence of me saying, I don't know, that game might be okay. <laughs> <laughs> like when they were showing trailers of it, right? Like uh -huh. before it came out and uh, apparently, no, it is not okay. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I was like, well, I don't know if you're going to make a Lord of the Rings game. That's an interesting take. It's not the mm -hmm. one you would expect for them to make. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, I think that we did say back before the game came out though that we did all say like yeah if it's like fifteen dollars <laughs> yeah <laughs> so ten is technically cheaper than what we said before i mean it <laughs> always had budget game <laughs> all over it. so you kind of you kind of knew that game wasn't going to mm. hold at 60 for long <laughs> yeah gamestop executives please put the playstation version also on sale for ten dollars I think I'm just going to wait until they're all in a landfill and go find it and, <laughs> and make a documentary. Next to the E.T. cards. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, how's everybody's end of the semester going? 
it's going, you know, I think it's, it's weird coming to the end of the semester because it's my last semester, like being fully in coursework. So we should note to people listening, this is the last day of classes. Next week is finals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Next yeah. week is finals, <laughs> but it, it's weird, but nice. <laughs> Do you think you might finally be done with classes? Yeah, I still have to. T- I still have to take one more class in the spring, but it's a class with Johnny, so I'm uh, trying not to come at him too hard for me because he's my advisor. <laughs> uh, Johnny, you really need to know. She told me to say those negative things <laughs> about your podcast. She also said she really dislikes Doctor Who. It was like, <laughs> like for no reason. It came out of nowhere. Oh, now you're really gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's been, you know, it's interesting end of the semester, headed into Christmas. It's always kind of a chaotic time. Um, you know, I was talking. Could, could you say that there's a lot of chaos happening? Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> that was for you, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> you have made his month. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it is chaotic, and I was talking to a friend the other day who is a, um, a professor at a different university, and she, we were kind of commiserating over the sort of chaos and how students just are completely oblivious that their professors are also in chaos at the mm-hmm. end of the semester. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Like that all these papers that we've assigned and are having to grade in a matter of days um, over multiple classes, and then... There's also always departmental stuff that comes up at the end of the semester that you're having to deal with. Um, it's just chaotic for everyone at a university. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's a bad time to come bother people at a university. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I fully appreciated until I started being an in, until I started being an instructor. Like genuinely, you have to write one five page paper. Okay, the instructor has to grade 25 of <laughs> five-page papers. <laughs> yeah. It's, an, it's, an, it's a good way to teach exponential growth. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well, we've got a lot to talk about when it gets to news, so let's go ahead and jump into what you've been playing. Alicia, what have you been playing? It has been a busy week, so I've not really played anything. Um, I've done a little bit of watching... I'm currently making my way through Trevor Conroy's Animal Crossing New Leaf videos, so just kind of like sticking to the nostalgic calm games <laughs> sure. as kind of my break from all the craziness that I'm go- go- dealing with in the w- offline world. I feel like you are uh, amplifying relaxing because you're not playing the relaxing game you're watching the relaxing <laughs> game which is like enough steps removed <laughs> yeah. you should be like in pure tranquility i mean it it is my playlist to fall asleep to so <laughs> <laughs> it's like the uh if buddhists played video games <laughs> how they would play them um all right so um mario how about you what have you been playing honestly same haven't really played much this week this is going to uh, be a short segment. Yeah. Guys. <laughs> You've uh, also been watching Chugger Conroy's Animal Crossing New Leaf. I haven't. Um, <laughs> He's been looking in your window <laughs> watching you watch. <laughs> he uh, is totally, he's in pure nirvana. <laughs> yeah, we are not the same. No, <laughs> uh, no but I, I, as I've been working on, you know, uh, end of the semester stuff, I've been watching a friend play a game called Peglin. It's a sort of roguelike Peggle game mm-hmm. um you play as a little goblin that is known as a peglin and you get sort of all different kinds of balls that you shoot out and yeah that's basically and and each peg that you hit sort of adds to the damage that you do and the enemies sort of approach you mm-hmm. at, the, at the top of the screen oh, cool. um it's a game that that friends have been playing for a little while now but he's sort of come back to it um so yeah that's what i've been been really all all i've been doing i mean i have kind of gotten into a routine of doing like all of the New York Times mm-hmm. puzzles. I know we've <laughs> talked about them. Mm-hmm. You got um, me to download the app. I actually played it some this week. I will give OJ the credit on on that one, unless you know I followed and then just like, oh, this is really cool now. Other people <laughs> do it too. <laughs> well, I thought I thought you were the one who was really like uh, like hitting on it and everything. But no, it's me. Mario started last week. Oh, okay. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I I did all of like the doles and all of those those variants, sure. but I hadn't done done uh, the other New York Times ones. Um, but yeah, so doing that's really about it. There, like I said, there are some fun ones in some different categories. I got a, a actual nine out of nine on the Pokemon one. Uh, granted, it was like easy because it was just like all you need to have is knowledge from Gen One and Gen Two, mm, which nice. I was like, okay, I can do this one. <laughs> I can do this one, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm not that big of a. Well, that's. I mean, yeah, I. I it'll put a, a region up there. Like, I don't even know what game that is. <laughs> <laughs> Koala and region. Gen, that sounds made up. <laughs> I don't know what games belong to which generations. I mean, if you really sat me down, I could probably figure it out, but there's a large gap between playing certain ones, but I do still like to do that one. It's a, it's a fun one, but yeah, I guess I haven't really, haven't really played much. There are some things that I would, you know, I'm hoping to play once the, in the few days that I have between the end of finals and going back home. But uh, I'll talk about that when I actually get to play them. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. Yeah. Um, OJ, you got a new game system. Have you played any games? Yes, I have. So um, unlike Mario and Alicia, uh, the end of my semester is not that chaotic. Chaotic. (laughs) But... (laughs) Uh, so I've had, I've had a good amount. I mean, I've been doing a lot of interviews for my dissertation, but I've had most of my evenings free. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, as you said, uh, live last week, I bought an Xbox (laughs) with Diablo four. Uh, and so I I feel like we really missed the chance to have you do that, like (laughs) narrate it live and get frustrated at Walmart's checkout system. (laughs) (laughs) No, I do not remember my PayPal password. (laughs) All we need is the, the numbers on your credit card. Yeah. Let me, let me just read those out. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I've been playing a little bit of Diablo 4, really enjoying it. Um, but the, the big thing is that, uh, so I've talked multiple times about Castlevania Harmony of Despair. Um, I I'd, I'd had bought it on PS3 and on Xbox 360. And then so I could just download it with all of the DLC and everything uh, on the at Series X. Uh, so very excited. It's a very, very nice console. I have, like I said, I had a 360, but that's the only Xbox I've ever had. Uh, I really like it. I remember that I like the Xbox controller better than a PlayStation one. It just fits in my hands better. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, it, the unfortunate thing is that 360 didn't have online saves. So I came back to the game with nothing, as start, starting over from new, which is fine because like going through is kind of the, the part of the game. Um, and if you're familiar with Castlevania, I usually play Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she has to absorb spells from different enemies. And um, so she has a bunch of them, and she gets stronger the more spells she absorbs. She can get up to nine of each spell that she can learn. But she can only learn it once per enemy. So um, it, with the bosses, like the spells that come from the bosses, you have to run the boss a minimum of nine times, but it's a it's luck-based as well. So... Uh, you can so I've multiple times when I was fighting Dracula, uh, and he has two spells that you get multiple times. It timed out. I would get so it's thirty minutes per level. I would get there in like a minute and a half, two minutes, and then time out trying to collect the spells multiple times. So that was really annoying. Mm. Uh, and that's it's the problem I've had every single time because, like I said, I played I played it on four different what, like things. So I played it on the PS3. I played it on the Xbox. I played it on the PS Plus. Um, which I had to start over again. And I always play Charlotte, so I always have to go through all these spells again. And now I'm on the, the Series X. So it's uh, kind of annoying, but uh, I <laughs> I found out some, the last time I played, I thought I was getting really, really bad at games. Uh, come, to, come to find out that our TV has a game mode. And if you don't have it on the game mode, the TV adds frames to make things smoother. So as I was playing and I was just doing really horrible, I was like, I don't even know how I can be this bad. I've never been this bad before in my life. It's because it wasn't on game mode. It was adding frames and just screwing everything up for me. Oh, wow. Yeah. So if if you're just not doing well on games, check and see if you have a game mode on your television or if you can turn off something that smooths the uh, frames. So now I'm wondering, were you playing Super Mario RPG on the TV as I well? I wish I could was... say that, but no. Oh. I was playing on the Switch. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Yeah, I but, tried. There, <laughs> but there, there are a few games, though, that I played, and I was just like, oh, I hate this. This game is horrible. I can't do anything in this game. And then so I'm going to have to revisit them. 
<laughs> it's the motion smoothing yeah. setting that yeah. a lot of TVs mm-hmm. have. Yeah, that I could see that wreaking havoc mm-hmm. on a lot of games that require those precise inputs. Yeah, and and Harmony of Despair is it really required. There's a bunch of like things swinging, and you have to jump very precisely. Um, but so the last time I was playing it, I was just like, oh, this is horrible. But now that I know that it's that I that's turned off, I'm doing really well, and so I'm very happy with with the game. There's a meme that's been going around on social media that is, uh, hey, everybody, remember while you're at home for the holidays, this is the motion smoothing setting on every brand of television. Turn it off for your parents. <laughs> <laughs> your parents definitely have this turned on. Okay, that's good to know. I wish I'd seen that before I was, like, <laughs> thinking I could never play video games again when I was playing <laughs> I know I got old, but not that old. (laughs) Yeah, I know. And I was like, some games I'm I'm doing fine with, but why is this so bad? But yeah, (laughs) the TV was gaslighting me, I think. (laughs) (laughs) That's like um, trying to go back and play Parappa the Rapper or Uh any of those sorts of uh, rhythm games from the Mm -hmm. PlayStation 1 era. If you try to play those now on uh, like an LCD television, Mm -hmm. the... You know, we don't normally think of the delay, the input delay on mm-hmm. an LCD television until you go back and play those games mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. required like frame specific inputs and everything. Uh-huh. And actually, the same is like if you go back and try to play uh, Punch Out mm-hmm. uh, on the original NES, that like it, that oh. that delay is just enough mm-hmm. to like mess up those games. So when mm-hmm. they did a um, a remaster of Parappa the Rapper a few mm-hmm. years ago, they actually um, made the windows uh, for input wider wow. for that specific if, reason. I wonder if that's what happened with, because in the first Sly Cooper game, one of the boss fights has kind of that rhythm mm-hmm. part, and then the PS3 port, everyone was like, holy shit, this is awful. Mm-hmm. This is so messed up. It doesn't hit, it. Th- the, you know, pressing the buttons doesn't match the beats at all. Mm-hmm. I wonder if, I wonder if that happened there. I mean, it very well might be, you know, something or something related to that. Um, you know, that's been one of the big issues with this whole idea of like streaming games. Mm-hmm. Like streaming games makes a whole lot of sense if you're playing, say, Final Fantasy, right? Mm-hmm. Where like precision timing generally doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it becomes much more problematic the minute you start playing a game where, you know, like a fighting game, for example, like with Street Fighter or something, where that sort of precision input does matter a great deal. Um, so, yeah, it's something always to check. So if you are having trouble playing video games, check the <laughs> motion smoothing <laughs> settings on your yeah. television. But, yeah, so that's uh, – I've just been playing those two games, really. I, I did download Celeste. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be playing that for the first time here soon. Nice. Great game. Yeah. Because you've been you've t- you talk so highly of it, so I I figured I would I would try it. I think you'll like that game. Like mm-hmm. that's a a really really good game. Remind me one more time. What were the things you hated about that Mario? <laughs> 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 uh, 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 I I I know it's a platformer. I know it's going to be there. So <laughs> there's no wall jumping. Not well, at least not really. Well, there kind yeah. of is, but <laughs> <laughs> not until like the high high levels. Okay, that's well, like you'll, seasides you'll it. that it's really necessary. <laughs> I, I will say that it that game I feel like is pretty is pretty forgiving to get through mm-hmm. the main the main part of the game mm-hmm. right like so there are the bonus yeah. levels after you finish that are really challenging but the main mm-hmm. part of that game I feel like most people can with enough time mm-hmm. now you might bang your head a couple of times <laughs> yeah and I don't know what it is about that one compared to others maybe be it's not really puzzly but I mean. There's something that you definitely feel yourself getting better at that game. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I def I felt it as I played it the first time, as I started like speed running it. Like, there's a way again, sort of just like you feel yourself getting better at it. And I think, mm-hmm. I mean, I think that was part of the design philosophy. I think you know Maddie has talked about that that you know, she wanted to make this game that was very difficult but also kind to mm-hmm. the player right. in terms of how you get better and and Mm. learning from those mistakes as compared to, you know, those types of like rage games where you're going to, you're forced (laughs) to basically learn by, you know, through trial and error. But, um, 
Yeah, well, I mean, I, I certainly do hope you enjoy it. If you don't, don't ever tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll delete your number if I don't like it. It's fine. <laughs> um, I was talking to somebody about that the other day. Um, someone who said they had shown a, I, I won't out their name, um, but said they had shown a movie poster that they really loved to students and were using it to teach rhetoric. And the students were like, this is terrible. We don't like this. And they were like, it just made me mad. <laughs> and I, was like, I was like, yeah, good lesson. Never show students something you love. <laughs> they will absolutely hate it. And then you're just like bitter. <laughs> All ifs. Why did everybody fail in this class? Well, <laughs> I had brought a poster in. <laughs> exactly. Um, so um, let's see. I I really have not played much this week. Um, so I'm kind of in the same camp as uh, everybody but OJ. Um, mm-hmm. I did play a little bit more of Dave the Diver. I'm continuing to enjoy that game. Um, I, I feel like it's a game that probably over Christmas, I'll invest a lot more time in. I did pick up a couple more games because they were on sale. So I picked up Dredge, which I had not played yet. Um, and so I, I feel like if I can get through this next week, then I have a lot of games lined up to mm-hmm. play over Christmas. Nice. Yeah. So that uh, Steam Deck will be getting lots of use. <laughs> um, and speaking of Steam decks, so the Game mm-hmm. Awards is last night. We're going to talk about that in a minute with the news. But the Game Awards every year like has giveaways during it. And it's like, hey, go to this website. You can win whatever. So like last night they were giving away the Steam Deck, OLED, and some other game system. I, I hadn't heard of them. Not one of these handheld computer systems. Um, and the, the servers were just crashing. Like you couldn't access the website. And it wasn't even like access, be one of 100 people to access this website and you win. Mm-hmm. It was access this website and enter. Mm. And then they closed it down. Like when the game awards was over (laughs) and I still had never been able to access it. Now Mm. I didn't sit there constantly clicking refresh Mm -hmm. the entire time, but I would come back every once in a while and go, Oh, I'll hit refresh. See if it's working now. And I think like that's at least two years in a row. They've had that problem. And it just seems like, okay, guys, like maybe start it during the game awards mm-hmm. and extend it like through the rest of the night or something mm-hmm. yeah. so that people can like, ex- you know, engage with this and everything. I mean, that's genuinely like let people have a chance. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it just seemed kind of, I, I mean, you can't say it's sleazy because like, I, I don't, <laughs> there's no way they're getting something particularly out of it, mm-hmm. you know, but it does seem like it's kind of, uh, leaves a bad taste in people's mouths about mm-hmm. the Game Awards, um, which, you know, the Game Awards is already good enough at doing that on its own, so <laughs> it doesn't need any extra help. Um, but let's go ahead and transition into the news. Last night was the Game Awards, um, arguably outside of E3, the biggest event of the year in video games. And um, there were, as always, a ton of announcements as part of this, so... We are just going to kind of run through these, and if there's one that you particularly want to talk more about, um, then, you know, obviously jump in. Um, So they began the show by showcasing a remake of Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. Um, It struck me as a little weird because that game's not that old, and for it to be getting a (laughs) remake seemed a little weird. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I guess it's an Xbox 360 game, I think was when that game was released. And I guess we are getting, you know, we've had well, two remakes already of The Last of Us. Yes. So. <laughs> I say it's got to be nearing 15 years old. Maybe not. Yeah, that may but be it, true. if it was Xbox 360, I guess that's, you know, about the time that I think of the Xbox 360 being at its peak mm-hmm. was late 2000s early 2010s yeah yeah i mean the you know the playstation 4 xbox one generation Mm -hmm. was you know about eight years so Mm -hmm. it's been a decade at least and i and i could also just i mean the the other reason i could see this is since this came out obviously you know it takes two did so well for i forget the name of that that company joseph ferris i know is like the creative director but Oh, crazy Joseph Ferris. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, if this is one that maybe people didn't realize or, or don't have access to, um, 
you know, I could, I could see why I think it's a, it's a very powerful game. Uh, I think it's a very, you know, uh, you know, intriguing game to play through, whether you're playing through it by yourself or playing through it with another person. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I do get it, but it's, it, I, I wouldn't expect it to open, <laughs> open the show. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, it's the sort of game that can probably find a new audience. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and if you want people to find this, it can't just be, Hey, this is backwards compatible. You yeah. have to put out something new to grab people's attention with it. Yeah, I want to say it's on Game Pass or it was on Game Pass, but you know maybe this just sort of like allows for it to be illuminated if people kind of just sort of passed right by it if they weren't familiar. Sure. Um, then they showed off a game that looked bizarre with full motion <laughs> video clips playing in the background of some of the scenes and everything. And then at the end it popped up and said, it's Pony Island 2. Panda Circus. <laughs> and it's getting a sequel? Yes. I don't know what one is, but Oh, really? No. Yeah. So like as soon as it popped up at the end and it said Pony Island 2, I was like, "Oh, of course this was a Pony Island." <laughs> That's the thing that makes the most sense. Naturally. Yeah. Um yeah, Pony Island 1 is a really bizarre game. Um, and it's one of those games that's designed to be weird, mm-hmm. right? Um and after after it came up, the trailer made more sense and mm. insight and everything. Um, so that was neat. It was neat to see that they're making a sequel to that. Mm-hmm. Um, they also announced The Rise of the Golden Idol. This is sequel to Curse of the Golden Idol, which just came out last year. Um, so I, I don't think a lot of people played that game. Um, it's sort of an, uh, uh, a detective-style game. Mm-hmm. Um, they showed off Usual Jane. Uh, So this is a third-person adventure game. It's from... So my understanding is this is developers who worked on Night in the Woods and Tunic. It's not like the same developer did both of those games, but Mm -hmm. this is like developers from those two teams Mm -hmm. uh, are are making this game. Usual Jane looked fine enough to me. the reason I'm excited is the pedigree of who's making this game. Sure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Like those two games I love. I think those two games are fantastic. And so seeing those people making a new game, even if it hasn't sold me yet, that makes it more exciting for me. Um, let's see. Um, and then, <laughs> then they showed off a game that just like, slowly built to the point where all of a sudden it was like, oh, this is something really interesting because it starts off not that interesting. Um, And that's Harmonium, the game. Um, And I will say that they pitched this game when they introduced it, that this game was really um, being designed from the ground up for accessibility. So the Game Awards have an award for best um, accessibility in a Mm -hmm. game. Uh, they've added that. I, I, that's been really cool. We'll talk about that when we get down to the awards. Um, but building a game around accessibility with that very much in mind, um, particularly for a game that looks like it's coming from a smaller studio, right? This isn't yeah. Spider-Man 2, which is being built around, you know, with all their accessibility options. So this is a, a, a game where one of the characters is deaf and, the other characters are signing in the game, which uh, before we went on air, Mario, you and I were talking about how difficult that is to like show like, you know, the individual hand motions and everything that that's not something that video games have been able to do until very recently. Like if you go back and play Ocarina of Time, there's just a big mitt <laughs> of <meat. laughs> that Link has. There aren't even fingers mm-hmm. there, right? So when you think about, technological innovations, this is like a cool one because you couldn't do sign language in a game until very recently Mm -hmm. with game consoles. Um, But then it's also a musical, like a, what, I mean, I guess what I would say a Disney style musical is what the music most reminds me of Mm -hmm. uh, rather than say Broadway. Um, But Alicia, I know you just watched this trailer and you were uh, very touched and excited by it. (laughs) Yeah. So I, didn't watch the game awards last night because i had an event but when i got in justin was like did you watch this trailer because you need to watch this trailer and yeah i started crying (laughs) um you know i 
you all know accessibility and is something that's very important to me. And especially with this, like, and I, I may have told this story before, so apologies if it's, if you've heard it before. Um, when I was in first grade, I had a non-cancerous tumor in my right ear that was large enough that it was starting to take over bone. So I was deaf in that ear. And if we hadn't caught it when we did, it would have started paralyzing the left side of my face. And so, you know, got that removed, got taken care of. It tried to come back a year later. We got it taken care of again. But all this to say, like, it's, it's very personal to me when it comes to, you know, deaf and hard of hearing issues. And so just the, the first moment of seeing that it's the main character of this game is deaf and that they're embracing that and showing like there's a moment in the trailer where, you know, she puts glitter all over the symbols on the drums and is playing them. And I'm like, yeah. what a, it's just beautiful. Like I, that's, that's a great, that's a great idea, right? Mm-hmm. Like as soon as I saw that, I had the same reaction. Like, oh, that's really clever. Like somebody can't hear the music, but they mm-hmm. can see the like glitter of mm-hmm. you know them playing. Yeah, and so just like everything about this makes my heart swell. Just I'm, yeah, I start crying before the show. <laughs> I'm probably gonna start crying if I keep talking. So I'm not gonna keep rambling. But I am. Beyond touched, beyond excited. This is incredible. She's not joking. She really did. She's not just saying <laughs> no. that. Um, no, I genuinely, I genuinely had to like leave the room, get a Kleenex. Like <laughs> there were real tears. <laughs> you know, I, I think the thing that I find really cool about this is one that as an industry we've gotten to this point, right? Um, where accessibility representation is not um, doled out into little bits and pieces. Because it would be really easy to say, hey, we designed this musical game from the ground up to be accessible by people who are deaf or hard of hearing. And that would be like, oh, that's really cool because you're making a music-focused game and to like take into account people you know, who have uh, uh, hearing difficulties – that's really like innovative thought, like cool, good on you. But then for that to be a central focus of the story too. Yeah. Right. So that, you know, that dedication is not just to assess accessibility, but also to representation. Cause we give a lot of credit to Microsoft and Sony and they have done a lot in recent years when it comes to accessibility of games, specialized controllers, uh, tons of options in games and everything for better accessibility but like this is the step beyond it, and this is the step that I think really matters. Yeah, this isn't just accessible gameplay; it's an accessible story and an accessible accessible character mm-hmm. that I I can't think of any main character in video games who I've seen who is deaf or hard mm-hmm. of hearing. Maybe if I thought hard enough, I could come up with a side character in something. But certainly, this is the first of its kind, and I am so excited for this. (laughs) And I also think, like, when we talk about that, part of the reason we, you may not have seen that in games is is so technologically has been difficult to represent that Mm -hmm. in a game previously. So when we talk about showing a character signing, right, how do you do that in a PlayStation 1 era Mm -hmm. game? You say, oh, that's Jill. Jill's deaf. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like, how do you represent that to the player that Jill's deaf? And in this game, you know the so the signing obviously, but like even the thing about playing the drums with the glitter on it, right? Like you couldn't do those particle effects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and that's not to give them entirely a a pass for Mm -hmm. the past, but it is to say like the technological improvements are making this sort of representation Mm -hmm. and also this sort of accessibility. Um, easier to do. Yeah. So maybe we will see more of this sort of thing. Yeah, and I think I think where you know they deserve the most recognition and credit is is in recognizing that the technology has gotten there. They're actually doing it. You know, mm-hmm. because I I you know imagine 
you're right. My, one of my close friends, he majored in animation. And so, you know, I don't know anything about animation other than like watching him when he was working on projects or, you know, his, his take, but yeah, I have to imagine the intricacies that go into, um, those sorts of like fine, that you know what you would try to depict as like a fine motor skill, mm-hmm. um, especially when it comes to signing. Yeah, it's probably incredibly difficult. So I think a lot of credit is owed or deserved for them actually like, oh, now that we can do this, we're, we're going to do it. It's not like a, oh, you know, you could do that or that's something that we could do. Like, no, we're actually going to, to take the step and make, make it happen. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is the sort of thing I think should make everyone interested Sorry, there's some weird sound. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's coming through on the microphones or not, but it's coming through outside. Um, so anyways, um, I think it's one of the things when we talk about the expansion of video games and we talk about video games being more inclusive, it, it happens this way by mm-hmm. different people coming into the industry, making different types of games um, you know, the indie market is so important because, you know, again, if this was only AAA games, we probably don't get a game like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So having these smaller studios develop these sorts of things is, is really important um, and for the health and growth of the industry. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anybody, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know if anybody saw what console is this on is it just going to be sort of put on to everything i mean hopefully, um, hopefully said, put on to everything it said netflix games yeah. so that's a thing but it, it did say xbox game pass too oh, okay. i yeah. saw okay so having game pass on there makes me think this is going to be a like a launch game onto mm-hmm. game pass yeah that, mm-hmm. i could see that um they showed off uh wind blown so this is the new game from the Dead Cells creators. This looks like Dead Cells, but in 3D. Yeah. <laughs> um, it has sort of a uh, three-quarter overhead perspective. So it, it kind of looks like Hades meets Dead Cells. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which is just about the greatest thing I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and it, it's got these sort of like cutesy animals, and they have uh, fans on their back. So you can kind of, it looks like, move very quickly around the environment. Um, the animation in it was showing like lots of brutal killings of the animals, which, um, you know, I I don't know how much of that's going to be an actual game or how much of that's just to like kind of grab attention with the trailer (laughs) or something. Um, But, you know, Dead Cells to me is still one of the best playing games in recent Mm -hmm. years. I mean, just the feel of that game is amazing. Mm -hmm. We were, you know, um, uh, it just it it holds up better than many other games when I go mm-hmm. back to it even still. So mm-hmm. I'm excited to see what they do with this. Yeah, and so the the trailer too, like it didn't look like it, but it had a feel of like Happy Tree Friends. <laughs> oh, oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, oh uh, so that's what I was see, thinking as I was seeing it. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm 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 gonna look into this more <laughs> when they when they have more out there. <laughs> Um, they showed off Thrasher, which is the new game from the Thumper Studio. Uh, Thumper being a uh, a rhythm game, so um, it was a very very hard rhythm game um, that, if you played it in virtual reality, was basically hell. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. I I don't know like how this game will. be. B, but like I mean, it was a well-made game. It was just a game made for people who are really, really good at rhythm games, mm-hmm. um, and it was not made f- to be accessible to casual players. <laughs> it so. wasn't the bunny friend from Bambi. No, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, not that thumper. <laughs> More like Flyer in that movie. <laughs> Flyer's really the troublemaker. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting to see them making a new game and, like, continuing with the same sort of style of game with another rhythm-style game. Um, let's see. This was a surprise. They showed a collaboration between Dredge and Dave the Diver. So I have to ask, Justin, is this what... Because you mentioned earlier that you bought Dredge. Did you buy it before or after the Game Awards? I actually bought it before. <laughs> so, so, you're, so you were prepared for the great deal. <laughs> yeah. So then this popped up, and I was like, wait, what is this? Are they combining these games? Are these games linked in a way I didn't realize? <laughs> I haven't played through all the Dave the Diver, and I haven't even touched Dredge yet. 
So this is apparently DLC for Dave the Diver that's going to take some of the elements of Dredge, uh, including the boat from Dredge, <laughs> and put it into Dave the Diver. Uh, and as soon as they were like, it's the boat from Dredge, I just kept thinking, oh, great, we'll get the boat from Jaws next. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, but that's cool. It's cool to see two quote unquote indie games, um, you know, doing a collaboration, particularly this quick. And uh, Mario, you were saying, you know, those two games seem like they came out really quick to in uh, comparison to one another. Yeah. And I mean, it just, I think that's what I was saying before. It, it seems like such a perfect crossover uh, to get these two. Uh, studios to be able to work with one another. I know both of them were nominated for best independent game. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, the, clearly there's a level of like respect and admiration there. Just so to see them working together on something is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, they showed off a game called Exodus. This is from former Bioware developers. It's a sci fi role playing game with Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get older, the games stay the same. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, press X for all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Man, there needs to just be that button, yeah. right? Yeah. He McConaughey just says, all right, all right, all right. So is he a voice actor in it? Do they, like, model him in a particular particular <laughs> way? I, I don't know what they're doing with him. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> I assume he is at least a voice actor. Yeah, would make sense. <laughs> um, which which um, which company is Bioware? Is that Dragon Age? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is Bioware did Dragon Age and the Knights of the Old Republic games, and um, obviously more recently um, the um, their own sci-fi art. Is that Mass Effect? Yeah, Mass Effect. Okay. I'll say. I was thinking Starfield for a second. Yeah. <laughs> That's not right. Which one am I thinking of? Um, so, I mean, you know, a game like that, it's cool to see new original IP and coming from a, a very talented team. Mm-hmm. And they obviously have some money backing them if they're getting Matthew McConaughey involved. Mm, certainly. Like, Matthew McConaughey does not get off his couch unless it's enough money to buy himself <laughs> pot for a month. <laughs> And the Lincoln commercials or whatever yeah. car company, they, they've got to be paying a, a decent <laughs> price. I mean, at the very least, they're giving him a free Lincoln. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, he was the Lincoln lawyer, so. Wasn't he? True. <laughs> <laughs> it all connects. <laughs> it all Matthew, makes sense now. Matthew McConaughey <laughs> extended universe. <laughs> <laughs> the MCU is just the McConaughey universe. <laughs> The McConaughey Cinematic Universe. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're all connected. <laughs> um, let's see. So this was a surprise. They Not so much that they announced uh, DLC, but they announced DLC for God of War Ragnarok called Valhalla, but it is free and it is coming on the 12th of December. So it's going to be free. If you own that game, you can download this uh, completely free um, it is a, um, you know, it is a, a sort of like a roguelike mode for the game. So mm. it's going to have a, a new area, an island that you go to, and there's going to be enemies there that you can just like battle your way through and everything. Um, but it's pretty cool, like pretty cool to see them, you know, over a year after that game came out, mm-hmm. that's a 2022 game, putting out DLC and doing it for free. Cause yeah. you know. Maybe it's nothing, and maybe that's why they're putting it out for free. It's not mm-hmm. substantial enough to mm-hmm. matter. Mm-hmm. But, you know, this is Sony, and this is a big, successful mm-hmm. first-party game. Mm-hmm. They could have charged. Yeah, you could have charged damn near anything. <laughs> and I think, yeah. you know, people would have bought it with how widely praised those games have been and, you know, how beloved the franchise is. People are paying $10 for a jack-o'-lantern fatality in Mortal Kombat <laughs> 1. They will pay $5 or $10 for an entire new mode mm-hmm. in God of War. Mm-hmm. OJ <laughs> might pay $10. <laughs> for, for that was funded. That was funded, though. Yeah, yeah. 
Did, so, did she actually fund it? Did you actually no, get I it? I actually didn't buy it because okay. I was like, I'm not even going to waste the $10. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it is not worth that. It's not. <laughs> it's not worth wasting somebody else's $10. Yeah, like, if it were a cent, I would still be like, eh, I could probably... <laughs> I could go towards something else. But you're not you're gonna get two more. There are gonna be three fatalities that you get now. Uh-huh. A three thirty three mm-hmm. her fatality. Mm-hmm. Seems like a great deal. No, no. I, <laughs> are you sure that all three of them come in the same ten dollars? Because I think they're ten dollars each. No, no. They they're, they were giving people who bought that original oh, fatality okay. two extra fatalities okay. because so many people complained okay. about the value. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you weren't on that episode, so you may have missed that news. Yeah, I did, sorry. Yeah. Um, oh my I mean, I think $3 for another fatality is getting closer to a reasonable price. Uh, closer. <laughs> if you're not on the Switch. <laughs> <laughs> well, there in, is that. <laughs> in, in fairness, yes. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, I don't know. You could say it's even more worth it on the Switch because you're actually getting a completely unique experience. <laughs> right? That's a completely different fatality than all the other gamers are getting. <laughs> They're obviously having to spend a lot of time and effort to go in and misprogram the Switch version. <laughs> it's a console exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so like she puts the jack o' lantern over his head and kills him, right? Yeah, but this is a Switch version. Mm-hmm. How can we make it go wrong? <laughs> yeah, how can we make it look like gummy worms? <laughs> like, the 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 like the pumpkin is just gonna like slough off. <laughs> <laughs> The candles are still burning in the eyes. <laughs> mm, gummy worms. How, how can we make the house look worse than the Simpsons house? <laughs> oh, no. Mortal Kombat 1. <laughs> um, let's see. Next, we had uh, Big Walk. This is from the Untitled Goose Game Studio. Um, this was kind of weird because I it couldn't quite put a finger on exactly what this game was. It was described as a co-op 3D puzzle adventure. Um, you had characters who, like, start off, they kind of look like ants, um, for lack of a better comparison. And they kind of look out at the world, and they're like, let's go over there. And <laughs> then they kind of start off, and they eventually come to a big hole in the ground, and they, like, jump down into it. And then they're solving puzzles, and... Like it just looks bizarre. I'm, I missed them jumping into the hole. I From the initial sort of like, oh, let's go over there. I was like, oh, I wonder if this will just be sort of 3D, a short hike. Right. Um, but, oh, okay, I'll, I'll have to watch more of the trailer, I guess. <laughs> that, that trailer goes some places. Uh, that game looks really, I mean, Untitled Goose Game, right, was a very hung firmly in cheek game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what delightfully what I, chaotic. <laughs> yes. Um, they, that's why I was interested to watch it. I was like, Oh, okay. I'd be interested to see what they're doing next. And so, mm-hmm. um, they showed off yet another trailer for Hellblade two sinuous saga. Um, no official release date other than 2024. Um, you know, I, I'm still, cautiously optimistic about that game. I just don't know what that game is. That first game is such a small uh, sort of experience. Um, and everything they show for this one looks like they're trying to blow it up, which I don't... suddenly becomes a very different game, I feel like. Yeah. And so I don't know what that final game is going to end up being. It looks very pretty. Um you know, and so I have some confidence in them. I just don't know what that final game is going to end up being. Um, let's see. Uh, no Rest for the Wicked is the new game from the Ori Studio. Um, it is a dark action RPG. Um, so they did show a little bit of gameplay in the trailer for this. Um, looks neat. Very different take from the Ori developers who had made, you know, the sort of... Uh, I guess comfort core sort of style of game <laughs> previously to this. So uh, the casting of Frank Stone is a new game set in the Dead by Daylight universe, and it is described as narrative horror. I don't know what that means. <laughs> like a narrative driven horror game instead mm-hmm. of a like, you know, Five Nights at Freddy's, but Five mm-hmm. Nights at Freddy's has a narrative. Mm-hmm. 
Really? That was it. <laughs> that was Five Nights at Freddy's yes. Seven narrative. Yeah, it yeah. does. <laughs> There's a whole lore to those games. I mean, they made a movie about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's enough mess. of a narrative there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, in fairness, they made a movie of Battleship. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever read the booklet that comes with Battleship? Because uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> There's a deep lore in that booklet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, the trailer is all CG uh, for this. I do not know what this game is. Um, is is this a game? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. It is a game. Uh, it is not an experience. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, w- people laugh, but we're going to get sure. to one of yeah. those uh, here in a second. Um, you know, no, we laugh because we know <laughs> Christina, I think will be very excited about Absolutely. this. So yeah. next time we get her on the podcast, I'll, we'll have to ask her about that because mm-hmm. I'm sure she has some thoughts on it mm-hmm. <laughs> being a big dead by daylight fan. Um, they showed off a trailer for visions of mana, a new game in the secret of mana series, which is not 45 years old. As some people <laughs> say, <laughs> <laughs> it is not older than I am, <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it's getting close to 40 years. <laughs> so um, this looks cool, and, you know, it has a, a nice, neat art style, um, you know, it's an action RPG. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Mario was talking before the podcast about, like, it's it's nice having the color palette mm-hmm. there, too. Of, like, yeah. And I think that that's something, like, just in general, over the last 15 years, I've seen so much dark fantasy that I'm like, mm-hmm. yes, please give me bright fantasy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So very similarly to what Mario was saying before mm-hmm. the podcast, I'm I'm excited for this. Just, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> not that it doesn't have, not that I'm saying it won't have a in-depth story mm-hmm. that goes places, but <laughs> mm-hmm. it's nice to have something that just looks bright mm-hmm. and fantasy. Yeah. Well, this doesn't look like Final Fantasy Mm sixteen, right? Which is, you know, can be a great game, but is a much more like darkly serious Mm -hmm. role playing game. Mm -hmm. This looks more like that sort of traditional light Japanese fantasy Mm -hmm. that a lot of us grew up on. Yeah, and I think that's part of it is I imagine this is going to have those lighthearted moments. You know, Mm -hmm. we talked about uh, Final Fantasy four last week having, Mm -hmm. you know, the there is like a goofiness to that and there's a lightheartedness to, to moments of that game as mm-hmm. well. And I guess I just anticipate this having having those sorts of lighthearted moments where some I feel like a lot of games that come out nowadays don't offer that quite as mm-hmm. much. They are more sort of very serious, serious throughout, which isn't a bad thing, but mm-hmm. sure. I think that there's a there there is room eat for even the most serious game to have those lighthearted mm-hmm. moments as well. Yeah. Just wait till you get Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> it, it goes farther dark and farther okay. funny. So, Yeah, I think, um, you know, OJ and I both played Sea of Stars this year. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things I talked about with Sea of Stars was that it had that sort of whimsy of mm-hmm. 16-bit, mm-hmm. you know, square yep. NX role-playing games. Um, and that was really part of the charm of that game mm-hmm. was that it recaptured, mm-hmm. you know, that that feeling of those games and everything better than a lot of, you know, uh, sort of retro style RPGs have in recent years. Um, So, yeah, I I think you're right. That's an important part to the feel of those sorts of games. Um, Let's see. Um, So uh, (laughs) we got a look at Kojima's new game. And game in quotation marks and scare quotes. Yeah, there's a parentheses question. <laughs> um, it's called OD for overdose. And uh, they showed some footage, which I guess was full motion video. I wasn't, mm-hmm. when they showed it, I wasn't sure. Is that full motion video mm-hmm. or is that rendered? Um, it, it's awfully good looking if it's yeah. rendered. I, I think it was rendered because I, I watched it just before this and like I was looking real close to see and I think it is rendered, but I think it's just really, really, really good rendering. Yeah. Um, and then I think probably the biggest surprise that came out of this was he brought Jordan Peele out on stage and mm-hmm. Jordan Peele is in some manner collaborating mm-hmm. on this game, uh, which makes me think of... Um, Gamero del Toro, who was supposed to oh. be collaborating mm-hmm. on Silent Hills with him, mm-hmm. and um, the 
game that was going to come out of PT mm -hmm. eventually, yeah. theoretically. Now, um, if Norman Reedus would have popped out too, I think it would have been. <laughs> well, Norman Reedus is Death Stranding, Kojima, I, uh, Jordan yeah. Peele is Xbox Kojima. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's an important point. This yeah. is an Xbox uh, exclusive, mm -hmm. right? So this yeah. is the rumored Xbox exclusive project. Mm -hmm. question mark in parentheses <laughs> that uh, Kojima has been working on. So um, it's not a game. It's an experience. <laughs> <laughs> so at one point, the rumor was that this was being done with Xbox because it was going to use the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and in some way, this was going to benefit from being able to use the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what that means, I don't think anybody really quite knows, mm -hmm. right? I mean, obviously, we've had promises of that sort of thing in the past. Crackdown 3 was supposed to use the cloud. and I mean, I guess maybe uh, it did in the multiplayer, but, you know, I don't think people actually felt that effect really, and it hasn't quite... We haven't had that game deliver on this promise of what happens when part of the game is running in the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and... You know, so maybe this does that. It's a Kojima game, so it'll be interesting, even if it's a train wreck. I think that's the thing. Like, it it can be like really easy to like point and laugh when Kojima says certain things about like this is what this <laughs> is going to be. You know, I remember before it was Death Stranding, he's like, "This is going to be a completely new game or a new genre," and everyone's like, right. "Okay, Kojima," <laughs> and then it like basically was. <laughs> and so it's just like like I'm at the point where I feel like, all right, you know what? It's easy to like point point and laugh mm -hmm. and dunk on you a little bit, but uh, I will certainly be interested to see what this new quote unquote new media experience is. I feel like Kojima is the video game equivalent of Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I can see it. I can uh -huh. see it. So I feel like Nicolas Cage. Everybody kind of laughs at. Mm -hmm. Because particularly because he just does whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Like he, he does 50 movies a year at this mm -hmm. point. Um, but like I saw some interview with Nicolas Cage where he's like, I've got a few movies left in me. I was like, what? <laughs> have you like exhausted like <laughs> your uh, numbers that you have? It's like a boxer. <laughs> I, got a, I got a little bit of juice left. <laughs> and uh, but like I think, you know, Nicolas Cage, you never know what you're going to get. You never know if this is going to be an oscar worthy performance mm -hmm. like uh leaving las vegas or if this is going to be utter chaos <laughs> <laughs> right like the wicker man yeah you never Peace. know what nicholas uh, you never know which nicholas cage you're going to get but you know it's going to be something weird like it, you know mm -hmm. go back and watch peggy sue got married where nicholas cage is doing this like weird voice throughout <laughs> the entire movie the entire movie is like Hey, <laughs> why are you talking that way? <laughs> and see, like, all of this is just giving me flashbacks to the like, episode of Community where Abed like watches every <laughs> Nicolas Cage movie. I'm a cat. I'm a sexy cat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I feel like that's Kojima. Like, you just mm -hmm. never know what he's going to do, and mm -hmm. it it may not be for you. Mm -hmm. Death Stranding was not for me. Mm -hmm. Like, but I want people like. Kojima making games. Mm -hmm. I want people like Nicolas Cage making movies. Yeah. I may not want him in a movie I'm like excited <laughs> to see. I don't want him to like do something crazy. But you know, he's out there making mm -hmm. movies like Mandy, and you're just like, okay, great, Nicolas Cage, uh -huh. go make your bizarre, weird movie. <laughs> he would have been a better choice for Mario's voice than Chris Pratt. He actually would have. Well, yeah. I mean, he would have been interesting. He, yeah. he did great in the Spider Verse movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, so we've got Matthew McConaughey, we've got Jordan Peele, but what happens when Nicolas Cage is in a Kojima game? <laughs> so sick. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, yeah, I mean, it's a Kojima game with Jordan Peele. So, I mean, think of it that way. What happens if Jordan Peele puts Nicolas Cage in one of his movies? Yeah. What if he's in Get Out? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of Bradley Whitford, Nicolas Cage is the dad. <laughs> yeah, that is a significantly different film. So I just want to say I want to become a billionaire so I can fund that movie. 
<laughs> a remake of Get Out. Yeah. <laughs> Nicholas Cage. Everything, everything else is the same. Yeah. Right. And Nicholas Cage plays every character in Get Out. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I love you, billionaires out there. We need this to happen. Fund it. I mean, look, stop screwing up Twitter. Yeah. Spend your money on something that will actually endear you to people. Yeah. <laughs> Nicholas Cage led remake of Get Out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um,. But Mario, I think you're right. It, it, you know, Kojima is he. You know, he's the closest mm-hmm. thing the video game industry has to an auteur. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like somebody who has a singular vision. And you know, of course, video games are made by hundreds of people. Like just like films are, mm-hmm. auteur theory is kind of you know shit. Um, mm-hmm. But like he is definitely bringing a unique vision into mm-hmm. video games, and video games are better for it even if those games don't always connect with the widest audience Mm -hmm. because you know like he's bringing he's bringing these sorts of people into video games too right he's bringing jordan peele into video games you said the actress who was involved hunter schaefer yeah um you know so like he's bringing her into this you know like a um a a popular young actress Mm -hmm. and everything so he's doing that you know yeah and oh, sorry uh, to interrupt you. And you know, you're seeing that happen more and more and more. Um, you know, with Jordan Peele is now involved in this. You figure you, know, you had mentioned Guillermo del Toro was mm-hmm. working with uh, Kojima on PT, right? But then we had, I mean, I guess George R. R. Martin isn't a, in film, but like he was helping with you know Elden Ring to sure. some extent, right? Yeah. So like bringing in these, you know, I, I had like prominent figures within their field within their particular medium and like adding them to games is like it's going to change it we we talk about it all the time we talked about it last week with like shadow having a gun in a movie Mm -hmm. those are different like a game and a movie are different a game and a book are different they are able to do different things and so getting these you know these individuals who Mm -hmm. are familiar with their particular medium who have like mastered their medium i think it's fair to say to to sort of get that voice to get that input into a new one yeah, I think that's exciting. I know we talk about, and we mentioned it with Harmonium, how you know indie studios are typically the ones that like push the industry forward by doing these new things. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that is where Kojima, as like a very prominent, you know, sort of like triple A level figure, uh, you know, he is he is not afraid to do the same thing. The same way we talk about it with Nintendo, right? You know, in their um, hardware, you know, pushing the industry. Yeah, I mean, even if if this game ends up being a blow up. Um, I think it, you know, the industry will learn and grow from it and there's no reason why he can't try again. Right. So I so. guess it depends how much of a, sure. This game yeah, yeah, up, I guess yeah. that's fair. No, definitely. Um, I, I will make one correction. You were listing off the like prominent figures involved in have crossed over into video games, <laughs> left out one from dead by daylight. And Nicholas Nicholas Cage. Cage. <laughs> <laughs> true. True. <laughs> Um, <laughs> let's see. So like, I didn't write all these down, but like one of the things that did happen over this last week is Fortnite announced that they were adding like three new games to Fortnite. Um, this was really bizarre to me <laughs> because they came out and they kind of announced these and they're like, oh yeah. So one is coming out on Thursday, one Friday, and one Saturday. And I was like, what is going on with Fortnite? Why would you <laughs> Why would you launch these all Mm -hmm. at the same time? That doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. Um, So, like, let's at least talk about uh, two of these. Um, So one of them that they showed a trailer for and I guess launched during uh, this event was Fortnite Rocket Racing. This is from the Rocket League developers. So remember they bought Rocket Mm -hmm. League um, and... Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, Epic yeah. Games, yeah. They own Rocket League now. Um, and so they have them uh, making this uh, new driving game, and they showed a completely CG trailer, which I have no idea what this game is, other than they did show, like, portals opening and dropping, like, the um, the Rocket League soccer ball onto the track and mm. everything. But they were showing tracks. They did show shortcuts. They showed... A car like getting knocked off the track and then driving on the side of a like mm-hmm. rock wall, mm-hmm. um, so it looked 
interesting, and I would really like to play a racing game made by the Rocket League guys because they, mm-hmm. you know, Rocket League uh, plays really well. Mm-hmm. Um, so this does look interesting. I also don't really know. Um, I do not have Rocket or Fortnite installed. I don't know if this is going to be separate games mm-hmm. or if you're going to access all these through like the Fortnite launcher. Mm-hmm. I would guess the Fortnite launcher, but yeah, I. I because I want to say that's how the one we're going to talk about next, I assume, is the Lego. Fortnite. Right. I'm pretty sure that launches through the Okay, Fortnite does that? I think so. So they launched it the day before, which is Lego Fortnite, um, which, as, as far as I could tell, is the original Fortnite where you're building bases and everything and then zombies are attacking at night. That's what Lego Fortnite is, but in Lego form. So it's not the, like... 100 people get dropped onto an island Battle Royale-style Fortnite. It is what Fortnite started out as before they pivoted it um, and basically ripped off um, um, Player Unknown's Battleground. Mm-hmm. Um, but with Legos. Mm-hmm. So, And when I see that, I just I have to imagine like the Fortnite department at Epic Games is just like, Scrooge McDuck's money. <laughs> right? It's like whoever we want, we're going to get them. Whatever property we want to work mm-hmm. with, we're going to get them. That it's a little Nas X. We'll do a concert. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> it, it, it's not a money bin. It's a mall. That's what Epic did with the money they made. They bought a mall in, I think it's North Carolina. <laughs> so a mall was shutting, had shut down, and they went in and bought that, and that's where they're building their headquarters. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah, this is like two or three years ago that this happened. Um, and so I don't know if they've moved into that mall <laughs> and they're <laughs> there now. But like at the time, everybody was like, wait, are, like is the cafeteria going to be the food court? And you're just going to <laughs> open up like an, there's going to be an orange Julius at work? <laughs> <laughs> there better be. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I mean, you're right. They just have a ton of money. And I mean, you know, this is something we've talked about. Like a lot of these games are at some point going to start bleeding users and it might happen much quicker than people realize. So I think we talked about that with uh, Apex Legends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, they might hit that drop off point. Destiny too. Yeah. I know we yeah. talked about it with. Um, and so this seems like Fortnite trying to diversify um, you know, they went out and they bought some game studios. Obviously, the Rocket League guys are working on this. Um, the other studio that they bought was Harmonix, the people behind Rock Band. They are making the third game. I, I wasn't as quite sure if that was a game or an uh, in Fortnite experience, but there's going to be a new music uh, thing that you can interact with. Um, and so, sorry, I haven't kept up with the Fortnite stuff other than seeing <laughs> that this was all happening. Um, but you know, like uh, this, this is probably smart to try to diversify. I'm not sure diversifying within Fortnite is the way to go. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't know if this brings people who aren't playing Fortnite in to play this racing game mm-hmm. or in to play Lego Fortnite. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, and I think the other odd thing, like you said, if, if they're l- releasing them like one day after another, like I, I, did, I don't know that that. I, w- I would think if they're trying to make sure they're not losing players, it would make sense to be like, you know, okay, drop this one, and then three months later drop the next one because people, ah, that's just odd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and maybe they just don't anticipate this being the same sort of target audience. Mm-hmm. You know, that be. maybe they're they're hoping, you know, Rocket League is incredibly popular. If we can get some people to download Fortnite and, you know, like, oh, you know, sure, why not? I'll give it a couple of games and... You know, get mm-hmm. get those people. So, like, if this, I I feel like this has to be, not them just saying, "Hey, Fortnite players, here's new stuff for you." But is this a new stream of people that we can bring into Fortnite? It may also be the mindset of we have all these people playing Fortnite. Mm-hmm. How do we keep them from going and playing mm-hmm. something else? Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Because the more they get outside of our little walled garden the more likely they are to find mm. the next big mm-hmm. thing for them. Mm-hmm. The more they go and touch grass. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Virtual or not, <laughs> the more problematic that becomes for us. So let's let's make an entire like amusement park, essentially, mm-hmm. right? 
Um, so this is the Disney strategy. So you mm-hmm. don't just make parts of the Caribbean. You also make Space Mountain and mm-hmm. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad and all of that so that people don't leave the park. They just go to another ride, and eventually they come back around ride uh, parts of the Caribbean again. Mm-hmm. Um but we'll see. I mean, it's still, I'm, I'm with you, Alicia. It does strike me as still very much weird that yeah, three days apart, like even if they spaced them out a week apart, a month apart, mm-hmm. that would seem to make more sense. But I guess they got a lot of headlines out of it. So um, let's see. We got a new trailer for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth along with one of the new songs from it. Um, so... Alicia, you're over there, like, rubbing your hands together like I'm Mr. Clapping. Burns. <laughs> I'm clapping. That's excellent. <laughs> I mean, yes, also excellent. <laughs> no, I am very excited for this. I am, you know, I watched the trailer. I watched the orchestral performance. I didn't realize until I was looking through the comments, the singer is the same woman who sang Never Enough in The Greatest Showman. Oh, really? Yeah. But I'm like, the the song is giving me such Eyes on Me vibes mm-hmm. from Final Fantasy VIII, which is my game. Like, I... And okay, is Eyes on Me the song they play over the end credits in eight? Um, They play it right before the end credits. Okay. Yeah. Um, But, no, I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very concerned because... The moment that we get with, like, Marlene and Zach, I'm like, what's happening right now? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I do hope, because from the trailer, it looks like they're highlighting the golden saucer date with Aerith. I hope that it's still possible to get it with Tifa, Mm because, but I don't, I'm, I'm excited. (laughs) This is just continuing to build hype for me. I can't (laughs) wait. (laughs) All right. Um, let's see. Um, they showed off a, a game called Lost Records Bloom and Rage. This is from the Life is Strange studio. Um, I don't know if this is meant to be set in that same universe because they've been doing some games that are kind of like spinoffs, um, with different characters, but it, they're still in that same universe and attached and everything. Um, I have not been keeping up with their games. I feel kind of bad about that because Life is Strange is actually a pretty good game and pretty interesting. Yeah, I played uh, True Colors, which I think is their, still their most recent one. Yeah. Um, and I, I enjoyed it for the most part. So, I mean, I'll definitely be interested in at least looking more into this one. They, I haven't played any of the other Life is Stranges. But. Yeah, Life is Strange is one of those. One of my friends from undergrad was playing it. And so, like, I, and she was uploading her playthrough on YouTube. So I was waiting forever for her to keep playing because I was like, oh, I want to watch her play. I don't want to spoil it. And then, you know, it's been seven years. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I need to, like. <laughs> you don't think she might finish it? I, I don't think she'll finish. <laughs> she might finish the game. She might have finished the game and not uploaded. I don't know. But yeah. <laughs> but it's one of those that, like, every every, like, eight months or so, I'll remember, I'll be like, that was a really interesting series. <laughs> I should go like check that out again. <laughs> Let's put a comment on the video. The last video she put up every day until she <laughs> new video for, win wait for the next part. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I also feel like Life is Strange is one of those games that brought a lot of people into video games who weren't. Yeah, mm-hmm. super into video games at the time. Um, it was one of those very accessible games. It was telling a story of the type that wasn't told a whole lot in video games, focused on a female mm-hmm. character. Um, and so, yeah, I think, you know, it's important to have, again, you know, we've been talking about that, but it's important to have people making these sorts of games that aren't your typical, you know, God of War style games um, because they do reach a part of the audience that then usually sticks around and plays something else beyond that. Um, So they announced a new Blade game. uh, That's Marvel's Blade. That's not necessarily Wesley Snipes as Blade. (laughs) Uh, This is coming from Arcane, uh, whose last game was Deathloop. 
uh, but before that had made the um, Dishonored games. Um, so this is a really, you know, talented studio. This is a top-notch studio tackling a, another Marvel property. Um Blade is really cool. If you just went back and made a really good game of the two first Blade movies back mm-hmm. in the 90s, I would be super excited about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe they'll do that. I mean, I have more trust in this studio than I would most. Fingers crossed. Mm-hmm. Um, they showed off a game called Mecha Break, uh, which is a multiplayer mech game. I really like this game from the look of it. It just looked like that. At first, it l- was very good graphics, but then it just looked like total chaos while they were playing <laughs> it. Excuse me. Chaos. <laughs> um, Derek's going to be so happy this episode. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be happy people keep saying his name. <laughs> um, but anyways, it, it just looked like a pretty cool game. It's the sort of game, though, that as cool as I think it is, it's a multiplayer-focused game. I probably won't end up playing much mm-hmm. of it. Um, but I'm, it's cool to see them making mech games again. Um, let's see. There was a game called Light No Fire, which is from the No Man's Sky studio. And, you know, they said this is their next big game. They said they're excited for this to be something that they're still working on 10 years after release, like No Man's Sky. Um, And if you haven't been following No Man's Sky, like the trailer for this begins with them like recounting like all the updates that they've put out over the last decade for that game. Um, And like as far as what this game is, it's kind of a bit difficult to tell. It looked like there was... um, you were going on an adventure, so it looked like sort of a fantasy-style uh, adventure slash role-playing game, but that there were also building elements because they were building houses at one point in it. Uh, but it was a vast open world, so it looks like it's using some of that procedural generation technology that they have uh, developed for No Man's Sky and obviously refined over the years uh, as they've added more and more onto that game. So it looks exciting. Yeah, I mean, considering where No Man's Sky started to where it is today, I think there should be, I think, a lot of faith in you know them. They've at least seemingly figured it out. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I'll be interested to look into it. Yeah, and you know, they've been a really fascinating company because they put out that game that came majorly disappointed people because it was not the game that they had really pitched. And then they have just stuck with it for years, putting out update after update entirely free. Like they have never sold anything for No Man's Sky, as far as I'm aware. All of that content has come out free. And they've just put out so much content, and each new piece of content sort of, you know, tickles a different sort of audience's fancy with the game. And so they have a, it seems like they have a surge of sales every time they put out one of those new free pieces of content. They have been, they went from sort of laughing stock to one of the great success stories of games over the last decade. Yeah. You know, uh, where people were angry at them, deriding them for how, what a disaster, Hello Games is their name, Um, what a disaster that game was at launch to now where they have nothing but goodwill, I feel like, towards them. So, you know, good for them. Um. Stormgate was shown off. This is a real-time strategy game from former Blizzard talent. So, um, you know, this is the people who made Warcraft and Starcraft Mm -hmm. going out and making a new real-time strategy game. Um, Look interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, nothing particularly groundbreaking that I could see, but, you know, I like a good real-time strategy game. (laughs) Um, Let's see. Um... Final Fantasy 16 DLC, Echoes of the Fallen and the Rising Tide. So two different pieces of DLC coming out mm-hmm. for this game. OJ, I don't know that you ever finished Final mm-hmm. Fantasy 16. You did? I was going to say I didn't, and now I don't have a PS5, so it might be a little bit until I do. Okay. <laughs> um, but well, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a bad fanboy. I just I was playing, and then I just stopped and forgot about it for until I saw this, actually. And I was like, oh, wait, I didn't finish that. And now I can't. Yeah. Um, 
would you be interested in DLC though? I think so. Um, I, everything that I played is really good. I really, really, really enjoy the icon fights though. Um, so I like if we're talking the rising tide, then it's probably going to be an icon, right? I, um, and stuff echoes of the fall. Godzilla. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's something that I, I will play eventually once I get a PS5. Well, have I got a deal for you? <laughs> <laughs> if it goes on for 350, I, I will not eat this month, but I'll go. <laughs> hey, I already got Christina over, um, uh, over Thanksgiving. <laughs> Black Friday, I got her a PS5. <laughs> Um, let's see. They showed off uh, a brief tease of Mon- Monster Hunter Wilds. Um, so I forget who said it. This is the billion dollar Capcom game they've been teasing. <laughs> I don't think it is because that that was by March of 2024. This is supposed to come out in 2025. Yeah. But it, it, when I saw that, I was like, oh, maybe, maybe this is it. But yeah, who knows what that game is? They announced this though, so it, it, it makes it even weirder, right? That yeah. they still haven't announced whatever that game is that they think is going to sell millions. It's like you start wondering, did they have a typo on that? Was it supposed <laughs> to be March of twenty twenty five? Right, because if it was March by twenty twenty five, then you could see it being Monster Hunter Wilds, sure. right? Um, and yes, that game will sell millions. <laughs> um, so I mean, I don't think anybody here is a huge Monster Hunter fan. No, not really. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we don't have anything to say about that. We, I do have a lot to say about the next thing, which was Sega's trailer. So Sega has a trailer. Two people are sitting play, on a couch playing Sonic, and then the um, Sega cab, arcade cabinet behind them lights up, and they're like light comes out of it and everything, and then... Um, it looks like it's going to be a, a trailer for a new Jet Set Radio game. And you're like, cool, a new Jet Set Radio game. That's awesome. Like, you know, everybody's been asking for that and everything. And then they just start showing more and more footage and it's more and more games. So they announced five games as part of this trailer, which is kind of just mind blowing mm-hmm. that this is the way they, they did it, but it certainly grabbed a lot of attention. So they are doing reboots of jet set radio, golden ax streets of rage, Shinobi and crazy taxi, uh, jet set radio and crazy taxi look basically what you would expect those games to mm-hmm. look like. Um, you know, obviously very updated and everything. These are entirely new games. These don't look like remakes. Uh, but Godin Axe and Streets of Rage look like 3D mm. uh, action games. Mm. So they did Streets of Rage 4 just a couple of years mm-hmm. back. Uh, that was a traditional side scroller. This looks like they're trying to bring this mm. into a more modern mm. uh, style. Golden Axe is such a weird game to, to bring back because there haven't been any sequels or anything, right? Yes, there were sequels oh, okay. on like on the Genesis. So, okay. um, so a minute ago, uh, yeah. We, well, a, a, you know, according to Mario, it's been forty-five years. That's <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> true. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's been a while, right? Mm-hmm. So I think there was a Golden Axe game. Um, so when was it last year that they put out that Golden Axe game that they had in development? And then they canceled, and so they took the demo that they had made mm-hmm. of it and put that out, and you could download it. Mm-hmm. And it was they retitled it "Golden Axed," <laughs> <laughs> and that was kind of it ended up being kind of a negative story because apparently they didn't talk to the developers, the people who originally made mm-hmm. it or anything. They just put it out without yeah. speaking to any of them. Mm, not um, classy. Yeah, I mean, you know, they made it for Sega. I guess Sega owned it, but. You know, still would have been nice to like talk to those people, maybe let them come back and finish some of the, mm-hmm. you know, make it polish it up a little bit. Um, this doesn't look like this has anything to do with that. Mm-hmm. This looks like an entirely new game they're making. Um, yes, I agree. It's kind of weird, except that there are people like me who <laughs> very much still love Golden Axe mm-hmm. and get excited and are still chasing that high of playing <laughs> Golden Axe in the arcade. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and then the Shinobi game looks like a, a 2D Shinobi game. Um, the thing that I really uh, thought was neat about it is that one of the shots did show his wolf with him. 
um, or dog or uh, whichever it is supposed to be. Um, and that's from Shadow Dancer, which is like one of my favorite Shinobi games. Mm -hmm. And so looking at that, I was like, okay, well, you really are going for the fans there. Mm -hmm. Like including that, that is, you know, kind of a deep cut for a certain type of mm -hmm. fan to bring that in there. Um, I'm just super excited about this. I love Crazy Taxi. Crazy Taxi is a fantastic game. It's a great uh, game to just set around with a group of people and, you know, pass around the controller and take turns. Um, I hope that they put the Pizza Hut back in there. <laughs> I hope they put the Tire Records back in there. I don't care that Tire Records doesn't exist anymore. I want Tire Records back in there. <laughs> Um, I played a lot of that game in college with friends. You know, that was the sort of game people come over and hang out and you put that in. And even if people don't play video games, they could figure out and play that game. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm excited to like see these games. Um, and the fact that they announced five of them all at once mm -hmm. just made, you know, made it much more exciting than if it was any one of these mm -hmm. singular. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Then they can just spend, you know, they can put, more detail on each of those individually out over time. So they'll each get their chance to shine, I assume. Um, and then the last bit of news was Baldur's Gate 3 um, on the Xbox shadow dropped. Oh. So okay. as of last Shit. night, Baldur's Gate 3 is available on, <laughs> on the Xbox. I don't have the money, <laughs> Xbox. <laughs> It's good timing. <laughs> you were just talking about buying a PlayStation 5. You can buy Baldur's Gate 3 easier than PlayStation 5. You can buy 5. like six I Baldur's know. Gate 3. <laughs> <laughs> you should buy six yeah, Baldur's buy Gate 3. all of 3. us a Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Let me get my phone. Hold on. <laughs> Live ordering Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> digital code <laughs> <laughs> all right i texted you all <laughs> um so they shadow dropped this uh obviously i, I think we had mentioned that th previously on an episode that xbox said this would be out by the end of the year mm -hmm. obviously it is now out by the end yeah. of the year they kept to their mm -hmm. word uh they shadow dropped it last night probably not coincidentally <laughs> The uh, game of the year last night was announced to be Baldur's Gate 3. What uh, a coincidence. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Great timing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, look, they make it very clear on that show that some of those award winners are, you know, notified in advance mm -hmm. and everything. Oh, okay. And that's not uncommon. Like, outside uh -huh. of the Oscars, most award shows let award winners know in advance because mm -hmm. yeah. they want them to show up. Yeah. Right? So, like, if you're getting nominated for an Emmy, they want you in the audience mm -hmm. so that you can come up and get your award because if nobody's there, it looks really bad on TV, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they often let those people know in advance that they've won particularly smaller awards. Like, when you get to your, like, blockbuster entertainment awards and <laughs> those sorts of things, mm -hmm. like, they tell those people in advance, MTV movie awards, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, and so, you know, like... I don't know if they tell the people who won game of the year in advance, but man, does this seem like a coincidence? <laughs> yeah. Like the timing of this and everything. Maybe Xbox was just, you know, uh, maybe they were just rolling the dice. Like there was a very good <laughs> chance Baldur's Gate three was going to win. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and even if it didn't, there was going to be a lot of people on social media. If it, if it wins, Oh great. You mm -hmm. should, now you have a chance to play it on Xbox. Mm -hmm. If it didn't win, it was like, Oh, it should have won. You should go play this on yeah. Xbox. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think they want to get it out before the, you know, people start doing holiday purchasing and all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff. Sure. Um, instead, all that discussion was focused around Spider-Man 2, which had mm -hmm. seven nominations and won zero awards. Oh. And uh, there was a lot of discussion about did Spider-Man 2 get robbed? Um, was this a reflection of how people felt about the actual quality? Mm -hmm. I think there were just games that out shined it in individual categories mm -hmm. well i mean we've talked before this year had so much mm -hmm. like so much incredible content that you know it, even looking at the game of the year category alone mm -hmm. it was like how do you how do you even mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i know there was one podcast i was listening to where i think they they literally spent the whole episode just trying to like 
this was before the announcement was made, of what games do you think will get nominated for Game of the Year? Because mm-hmm. there were like 10 to 12 options. Like this was yeah. absolutely a year they could have expanded the field and nobody mm-hmm. would have batted a nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, there was no game this year where it was, oh, that's the game that they just threw in there. Mm-hmm. Like, because they had to round it out, right? And they didn't know what else to include. That game, everybody knows that game won't win. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think people basically knew Resident Evil 4 Remake wasn't going to win. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't like it was an unworthy yeah. game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and right. Instead, it was all the things get, that got snubbed. You know, whether, you right. know, however you feel about Starfield, you know, that, mm-hmm. that not getting in. I mean, I feel like the game that not a lot of people talked about and considering how big FromSoft is, the Armored Core 6, I feel like I, right. you know, didn't hear anything. Of, really, I mean, I saw people playing it, but you know, that's as the sort of award season came around, didn't hear anything about it. Final Fantasy 16 was one that a lot of right. people thought, oh, this is, this is you know, one that it would be worthy of a spot as well. So, yeah. It's, I mean, Final Fantasy games traditionally are mm-hmm. on that short yeah. list for Game yeah. of the Year, right? And so, so uh, I don't remember where I was going with what I was <laughs> yeah. just talking about. But it was a very competitive it year. It was a very mm-hmm. competitive year. Even yeah. if people thought it was going to be the Baldur's Gate or Legend of Zelda award, mm-hmm. those other four games that were in there, mm-hmm in any other year would be like an incredibly strong contender. So the fact mm-hmm. that Spider-Man didn't win anything just goes to show how good of a year it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely, before any announcements were, were made, you know, in my head I was like, oh, Tears of the Kingdom. But then when I was like, oh, yeah, no, no, all of these, <laughs> all of these make sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, I think Spider-Man 2, and we've kind of talked about this on here, like leading up to the launch of it, it fell into that trap of we've had two Spider-Man games Mm -hmm. and they're really good games. Like no, you know, very few people deny that. Mm -hmm. I guess there are probably some, but most people universally praise those games. And this looked like more of that. Right. And that, that sort of the way the hype died on that game to some degree. And when you talk to people who played it, they're all pretty universally like, Oh, this is a fantastic game. This is great. Um, but I think that how the hype fell off on that game versus the way the hype built on something like Baldur's Gate 3 mm-hmm. or Super Mario Wonder. Well, like, I would even say Alan Wake 2. Right. You know, that yeah. that to me, I would like if I were to rank those six, I don't think spider Man's any higher than four in terms of like the hype and the excitement that people felt around mm-hmm. them. You know, I think you could have Baldur's Gate, Tears of the Kingdom, 1A, 1B. Right. I think I would put Alan Wake at three and then i think spider-man for me at least i mean i'm sure other people are obviously welcome to have their own feelings but from what i saw that's the way that i would sort of rank Mm -hmm. out like the ways that people got excited about these games Mm -hmm. i feel like more people were talking about mario wonder than i think that's spider-man too also very fair and you know because people were surprised by that game Mm -hmm. right and i think spider-man 2 gave people pretty much exactly what they expected and the problem is it was what they expected was a really good game, and that's what it delivered. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's exactly what people expected of it. I think it's similar to what we, well, maybe not. I'll let you be the judge of it. You know, similar to what we talked about with Diablo. It's not that Diablo is a bad game. Mm-hmm. Diablo yeah. is a very good game, mm-hmm. but compared to these other ones, mm-hmm. or the fact that it's just like, this is what you want, this is what you got. Mm-hmm. Like, we didn't, you know, there's no something extra that blows you away. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah. that doesn't mean that it's bad. It's just mm-hmm. these other games are a 10 out of 10 and you're a nine out of 10 and that's an incredible feat, but you know, no, I mean, OJ, you said you're having a blast playing Diablo Mm four and like, I completely understand that. Like that's a good game. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, my comments, I really, you know, I tried to be careful. (laughs) Nobody would take my comments Uh as bashing Diablo Mm four. It it just didn't, it didn't stand out, Mm -hmm. you know? And, but like, it's a, very good game. Mm-hmm. If you want a new Diablo game, I think you'll be mm-hmm. happy with it. Yeah, definitely. But it is a Diablo game. There's it, there's not really any new innovation. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And in a year where we're getting, like, you know, arguably some of the best games ever made, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Like, it's hard for that to, to compete on hype alone, mm-hmm. yeah. like for awards, right? Yeah. It'll be interesting. This is the sort of year that... 
five, 10 years from now, you'll look back and go, okay, well, how do people feel about these games now? Mm -hmm. Now that hype is done, now that people have had time to reflect, to actually Mm -hmm. play through all these games, Mm -hmm. how will people reflect and look on this year? What will be the games that have a lasting impact and that people are still talking about? Mm -hmm. And, you know, going into the year, really very close right up to release, we all thought that was going to be Starfield. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Starfield... (laughs) feels completely forgotten. Yeah. yeah. Starfield and Tears, I think, were easily the most mm-hmm. anticipated games of the year. I'm sure there are others that I'm not thinking. Uh, Armored Core 6 mm-hmm. would probably be up there as well in terms of anticipation, but it, that feels a little bit more of a niche. Yeah, those other yeah. two. Yeah. I, think, uh, I think Wonder probably as well. The Super Mario Bros. Wonder mm-hmm. game was probably up there for high anticipation. I yeah. think but, I think there was anticipation, but I think there was also, uh, we don't know what this is, whereas coming <laughs> off of Breath of the Wild, people were like, Tears of the Kingdom better be like, you know, we're talking about what, you know, following up what, what people consider to be like maybe the best game of all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Baldur's Gate obviously has a huge fan community, mm-hmm. but the fact that, that that hit the mainstream and became like popular in the mainstream goes to show how far like a, you know, very traditional style, you know, RPG would play. Mm-hmm. Um, hitting the mainstream is a pretty inc- impressive feat. Uh, yeah, I feel like there's been more time spent this year talking about Baldur's Gate 3 than there has been on Final Fantasy 16. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. Yeah. And if you, going into this year, had you told me that would be the case, mm-hmm. I would have been like, no chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, numbered Final Fantasy games get talked about a lot. Right, yeah. and I, and it, it felt like what people talked about with Final Fantasy, again, not that it wasn't was a bad mm-hmm. game, but right. that like, it's not... Final Fantasy, yeah. it's you know, it doesn't feel like what you expect of a Final yeah. Fantasy, and I think people could take that negatively, but I don't think anybody was saying that as mm-hmm. like a real genuine knock. Right. It just didn't, and I, I hit what with people that, yeah. wanted. You know, mm-hmm. didn't satisfy, didn't scratch the itch. Yeah, in the same way. Yeah. Um, so, game of the year was Baldur's Gate three. Best adaptation was The Last of Us. So this is adaptation into other media. Mm-hmm. Um, this is not adaptation into video games. Can I can I ask what this was nominated against? Mario uh, mo- Mario movie? movie? Halo. Hey, okay. Um, <laughs> the Twisted Metal. Okay. The Twisted Metal show, because Anthony Mackie, who stars in that, gave out another award and then is... So he gave out another award, which was like a unhinged presentation of the award. You should go on YouTube and watch it. Because um, he was unhinged? I think he had maybe had a few drinks. Okay. <laughs> he went up to present it. I like Anthony Mackie I in, do too. as an actor. Um, I don't know anything about like his personal behavior. Sure. <laughs> uh, but like him up on stage was like, buddy, are you okay? Like, <laughs> what are we doing here? Okay. Um, I guess there was also I don't know, it might, might have been too early for Five Nights at Freddy's, but okay, there there were more adaptations. Yeah. Yeah. Than so I was best, best adaptation was Castlevania Nocturne, Gran Turismo, yeah. Super Mario Gran Bros, Turismo. Twisted Metal, and Last of Us. Yeah. Okay. It was a big year for I, but I forgot about most yeah. of them. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I was wondering, yeah. I was like, mm-hmm. is this just like a, an achievement yeah. award? Like, were you nominated <laughs> against anything? And not that it's not deserving of uh-huh. that, but I was just like, okay. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, I think you know. In a year where The Last of Us not does not come out, that Mario movie wins this easily. Probably. Yeah. yeah, and um, they did announce as part of this though that uh, with Anthony Mackie up on stage that they were doing a Twisted Metal season two. Okay, which is you got to admit when they announced that show, you never thought that show would get to a season yeah. two. <laughs> I well, I mean, I will admit that. I think anybody yeah. has to admit that. Mm-hmm. Um, so they are running with it. So Mm -hmm. Godspeed Peacock, (laughs) (laughs) uh, best narrative went to Alan Wake two. Um, so you also see some spreading around of these awards. You don't Mm -hmm. see one game dominating. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that says a lot. Uh, These are not all the awards. I'm not going to read through all of them. These are the ones I thought were most interesting, uh, games for impact, which is their games that are having some sort of, uh, social impact. Uh Uh-huh. Um, was uh, Chia. Um, that's the sort of island adventure uh, exploration game. And then best independent game was Sea of Stars. Mm-hmm. So we talked about Dave the Diver and Dredge being nominated. It was a very strong category, I mm-hmm. feel like, for independent game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but Sea of Stars, I think, is an entirely worthy mm-hmm. um, winner of that award. So yeah. that's exciting to see. Absolutely. And I just want to say, Final Fantasy 16 people, that the turn Bay Sea of Stars won an award, <laughs> and you Dang. you yeah. were mentioned. I'm just 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 going to mention that a little bit. Well, no, Final Fantasy 16 did win Best Music. Oh, okay. Uh, so that's, uh, that's fair. I, yeah, that's fair. I like the music. I, I think, feel like that's I think what Seven Rebirth also won most anticipated mm-hmm. game. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I can, yeah. I think also like that category is always a little weird to me because it always seems like the games that are coming out in the first half of the next year mm-hmm. yeah. win that, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like those are the games people are most hyped yeah. for because yeah. the hype cycle has already started mm-hmm. on them. Um, Because I couldn't even tell you what else is coming out next year. Mm -hmm. Mario, did you? I was just, I was looking at what else was nominated for Sea of Stars. I knew it was Dave the the Diver and Dredge, but the other two were Cocoon and Viewfinder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think Cocoon won uh, Best Debut Game. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Which is for like a a studio's first game. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Because I, I, you know, wanted to say, I would have probably guessed either Dave the Diver or Dredge would have been favored. I'm not surprised that Sea of Stars won, but, uh, like I said, I, I, I wanted to know because I forgot. I felt like, oh, there was something that I was expecting would have won and it was mm-hmm. Nazi of Stars. So, um, But I'm happy for it. I mean, you know, there was a lot of talk around it. I think it, it satisfied a lot of, you know, you were just mm-hmm. mentioning it earlier about how it, you know, sort of got that feel right mm-hmm. for right. Those, those, you know, mm-hmm. 16-bit style RPGs. Yeah, I think... Um, you know, again, like you reading off that list of independent games, right? Mm-hmm. Like there was, there are a lot of good independent games this year. Uh, this has been, yeah, I feel like there's good independent games every year, but more than some years in the past, I feel like this game awards, you really did kind of go into categories going, well, I think this game will probably win for like political reasons, mm-hmm. <laughs> essentially. But any game in this category could win it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, it's not like in some past years where it really felt <laughs> like they were straining to figure out, mm-hmm. like, you know, which games deserve to even be nominated and are going to be an embarrassment. And I know we talked about it just to get back to the game of the year really quick. I think it's a lot better for, like, the game industry to have Baldur's Gate 3 win than mm-hmm. The Legend of Zelda. That's not to say that, the Le- yeah. again, The Legend of Zelda incredibly deserving, I'm sure. But I feel like something like Baldur's Gate winning... I don't know, gives, opens up some space for creative designs Mm -hmm. moving forward that maybe Zelda doesn't as much. I don't know if that's pure speculation, but that's just how I feel. Well, I think you have to think about what are award shows for. So the value of the Academy Awards is that those films often get re-released and get a financial bump, right? Mm -hmm. They get it from getting nominated and then they get it from winning the award. So they'll often re-release those films or mm-hmm. nowadays they'll, you know, they're on streaming usually by then or something. Um, and so they are a way for people who don't follow the industry super closely to know what's new and interesting in the industry. And I think something like the game awards, it's the, you know, it's not the only game award show, but it's the highest profile one. It's the most public facing mm-hmm. one. Um, that's the value, right? And I think from that perspective, absolutely. Like Zelda doesn't need any hype. Mm-hmm. Help. Yeah, mm-hmm. everybody, everybody, and their and their mom knew that Zelda Tears of the Kingdom was mm-hmm. incredible. <laughs> yeah, and I think from that perspective, we could even say something like Final Fantasy doesn't need it, mm-hmm. right? Fair. Like yeah. the Final Fantasy diehards went out and bought Final Fantasy, mm-hmm. and they you know seemed to be pretty happy with it and everything. Uh, but these are the sort of games that need that, right? Like, this is the sort of thing my brother might, like, text me and say, hey, what's Baldur's Gate 3? Mm-hmm. I haven't heard of that, mm-hmm. right? Uh, where he knows exactly what a Zelda game is, even if mm-hmm. he doesn't know this one yeah. specifically. And I think that was our feeling about Resident Evil 4 getting nominated, feeling just a little off. It's like, yeah. a, a great game. Those developers deserve that recognition, but compared to the slew of other games mm-hmm. that, you know, would benefit more from that nomination. Mm-hmm. I think that that was really, you know, the only disappointment in terms of like what got nominated and disappointment is even like a stronger word than I might mm-hmm. feel comfortable actually describe to mm-hmm. describe my feelings. 
Well, and I think the concern I have with it is, does the best game category become best triple A game, mm -hmm. and then we have the best independent category? Mm -hmm. Does one of these uh, independent games, one of the ones that you read off, is one of them more deserving of that sixth slot than Resident Evil? Not because even they're necessarily a better game, but they're a a new game. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something new and different and everything versus another remake, right? Yeah. And I, one of the things I mean, that are, Final Fantasy VII remake was at least an entirely yeah. new game. Mm -hmm. Well, right? and that, that was one of the comparisons people were making between like the Resident Evil 2 remake and the Resident Evil 4 remake. The Resident Evil 2 remake is basically a completely different game yeah. than the original Resident Evil 2, whereas absolutely this is a far prettier version of Resident Evil 4, but, you know, a lot of it is going to be similar because, you know, that was that that shift into, uh, you know, the over-the-shoulder camera and the, you know, more action-adventure style mm -hmm. that Resident Evil has taken. So, yeah, but, it, you know, I don't know how to necessarily <laughs> follow, that, follow that up. I don't want to, like I said, I think similar to what you were saying about Diablo this is not, you know, bashing Resident Evil 4. Um, you know, or saying it was undeserving, but I think that nomination would have gone further for a different game. It, it makes me think that the Game Awards need a remake category, mm -hmm. like a remake yeah. slash remaster category. Especially yeah. as, as frequent as they're coming out yeah. nowadays. Yeah. I mean, something like Metroid Prime Remastered came out this year. Mm -hmm. The System Shock remake came out this year. SMRPG. Um, what? SMRPG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, Dead Space, right? That came mm -hmm. out this year, mm -hmm. or was that late last year? I feel like it was this year, but I can't say that yeah. confidently. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I felt like it was this year. Um, but anyways, you know, that there you've got five, right? I think we just named five, like, remakes that mm -hmm. are all, like, really good mm -hmm. um, that would be worth, you know, being recognized mm -hmm. in some way. And... Um, you know, that's not to say a remake can't ever make it into that mm -hmm. top category, but I feel like a remake has to... I would not vote Super Mario RPG Game of the Year. Right, yeah, I think that's right. fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I would vote Final Fantasy VII Remake Game of the Year because mm -hmm. yeah. it's a whole new game. It, mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. based upon it, but it's more of an adaptation than yeah. a strict remake. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um. So uh, those were the games. Uh, we have a couple of last pieces of news here. One is that the Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer uh, got released. Well, first it got leaked, and then it got <laughs> released. Um, this is basically what we all knew it was going to be. It's set in Vice City. It's set modern day because we see them using social media and everything. Um, it looks like a Grand Theft Auto game. It looks very pretty. I think the thing that got me excited about it is traditionally those trailers have always been in engine. So they're not mm -hmm. pre-rendering that stuff. And when you watch that trailer, there's some really cool stuff like the hair effects and everything. Um, you know, some of the movement, there's a scene where they're like uh, out mudding, um, mm -hmm. you know, driving trucks mm -hmm. through the mud and everything. And the characters are all covered in mud. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, this looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Like graphically, it's not, you know, it's still in that resident. It's still in that Grand Theft Auto style, but it it, it certainly l like um, is a big step up from five. So I don't know if anybody else had any reactions to this, or anybody else is even a Grand Theft Auto fan. Um, I really liked five quite a bit. The only one I've ever played is three. I have them them all because they probably got them super cheap in some bundle. Right. But uh, um, it was it was interesting to watch, and I feel like. Grand Theft Auto is so interesting because it's such a big game that it it feels like a, you are going to get every type of person playing this game. Mm -hmm. And so, like, reading the comments, you'll see people say, like, the most positive things about, you know, whatever they're seeing in the game. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have people say, like, you know, the most racist thing possible <laughs> in, like, <laughs> response to this trailer. I'm just like, you really just get every... every yeah. Like, I mean, we talked about it in, like, what, 150 million sales right. or something like that for... Grand Theft Auto 5. And so it's just like, it's so weird to see, again, like every everything just said under this trailer. And but. what's really interesting about that is, right, Grand Theft Auto is parroting 
like that sort of behavior, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> right? Like these are people who are reflecting the reflection that's in the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, putting two mirrors <laughs> facing each other. Um, yeah, that, that is bizarre about it. It is such a widespread game at this point. Um, it has such a mass appeal that, yeah, you are going to bring in the, like, you know, it, it's Call of Duty. It's uh, Madden, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It is, is transcendent to that level that, you know, even something like a God of War hasn't. Sure. Um, let's see. Lego Fortnite, we already talked about. Uh, Vampire Survivors announced emergency meeting DLC. Uh, this is uh, using the Among Us characters and universe. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what this actually is. <laughs> yeah. But it's Vampire Survivors, and so I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, same, same. <laughs> and, you know, knowing them, this will be like $2 for this DLC, mm-hmm. so, like, why not? Yeah. Uh, the Zelda movie director says he wants it to be a live-action Miyazaki. Um, I'm assuming he means Miyazaki, the uh, anime uh, film director, and yeah. not Miyazaki, the director of Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just just probably. <laughs> no, he specifically referenced like Spirited mm-hmm. Away, and right. <laughs> no, I th- I think that that gives me hope. I'm that gives me hope that they're going to do you know kind of the high fantasy route that we talked about kind of wanting to see Mm -hmm. from this movie. So that makes me excited. I think the thing for me that's interesting is the look of Zelda games is not the look of any film Mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. So you start thinking like, how do they make it? How do they capture that sort of misty, Mm -hmm. um, like ethereal, like look of Hyrule Mm -hmm. and, you almost start to think like, okay, this needs somebody who's going to make the uh, 300, but in exactly the opposite direction. (laughs) And see, I'm thinking so much because one of my prelim questions is about the Spirited Away play. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking a lot about that. And like, you know, that's a movie that a year ago I would have said had to be animation. Like, and then compared to seeing the play and seeing how they brought the magic convinced me that they could do it. And so I'm hoping that the Zelda movie director has watched that and sees how you can bring the magic to life. <laughs> you should email him. <laughs> Find him on social media. Contact him. <laughs> um, yeah, it'll be interesting, right? Like, if you want to capture that look, that feel, I, I think that becomes a, a more challenging thing to do. Um, but I feel like it also needs that yeah. to really capture Zelda. Um, and the last thing, um, is Hideo, uh, Hideo Kojima is, um, also going to be the focus of a documentary called Connecting Worlds that is coming to Disney plus this spring. Um, so th- cool, I guess, like, <laughs> you know, he's an interesting guy. He's done some interesting things in games. There's going to be a very mainstream documentary cause it's playing on Disney plus they'll give it some hype. Mm-hmm. Um, that that seems cool. Like it would be neat to see a series of those done about different game developers, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. These sort of like pantheon of like legendary game developers. Yeah. Um, one of the, there's a conference I go to in Albuquerque, at least I try to go every year and two of the, um, scholars there, they have a book series on influential game designers. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I'll be interested to see, you know, I, I'm planning on going there, going to it. It's in February. Um, so, you know, I'd love to chat with them about this. I believe Kojima, uh, they have a book about Kojima in their series. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I'll be interested to hear about it. But, yeah, I would agree. I mean, the games have hit that point where we know who these people are. I mean, even if, you know, yeah, auteur theory doesn't really work for, for games um, specifically, we've reached the point where the, you know, these people have become big enough where we recognize them the way that we do with directors of, of films. And so, yeah, having a documentary series about, you know, Kojima or a film about Kojima or, you know, Miyamoto or all these other people um, would be very cool. Can Nicholas Cage do the voiceover narration? <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, it would be wacky if he did. <laughs> I'm going to do it in a Scottish accent. <laughs> well, no, no, no. <laughs> you really don't need to. I am Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> no, you're not Scrooge McDuck. You're Disney, right? <laughs> yes, but you can't do Scrooge. <laughs> That would be incredible. <laughs> Ko- Ko- what does Kojima's Kingdom Hearts look like? You know, he's combining his world with the Disney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. man. Close quarters combat. <laughs> Donald Duck. <laughs> I mean, at least then Donald would finally be useful. <laughs> Instead of not casting healing spells. <laughs> Um, let's see. Uh, so that does it for news. Our big question, since we talked an awful lot about, uh, the game awards this week is what game awards announcement are you most excited for? Uh, Alicia, we'll start with you. What are you most excited for? I mean, I feel like it's cheating if I say Final Fantasy VII Rebirth <laughs> because I've already been excited for that. So Harmonium is the new one that I'm the most excited for. That, that makes sense. Um, Mario, how about you? Probably Blade. I feel like, I think I mentioned this before the the show. I want to say there was an episode a few months ago where the qu- big question was, what franchise would you most want to see turned into a game? And I'm pretty <laughs> sure I answered Blade. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I feel yeah. like just, you know, for consistency's sake. You were being prophetic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make everyone listening. know. <laughs> um, if I say something, you be prepared. <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel like it was, because uh, then it was like shortly after that where we got all the news about the Blade the upcoming Blade movie. And so like, mm. the Blade is, you know, rising in, in its stock. Blade is rising. <laughs> that sounds like the next movie's title, <laughs> Blade Rising. <laughs> um, all right, OJ. Uh, so uh, with all of these, I'm looking forward to OD just because I really, I really want to see where Kojima and uh, Peel go with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I just... <laughs> I wish there was more PT in everything uh, and everything that he works on. So, so maybe they'll, they'll have some of it in there. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, Well, I think I already kind of tipped my hand. I'm probably most excited for all these like Sega reboots. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Seeing, (laughs) seeing five of those, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to take all five because they were (laughs) in one trailer. Um, Just seeing Sega get back to being Sega. I mean, I know that's the dream, and I know it's probably not going to work out. Mm -hmm. Uh, But seeing Sega make something of their legacy other than Sonic, Mm -hmm. right? Like, Mm -hmm. good, keep making the Sonic games. Mm -hmm. Sickos eat them up, right? (laughs) They've got Yakuza. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but, like, you know, Yakuza is not of that legacy. Those are not traditional, sure, sure. Um, like they own such a wide amount of IP. Mm-hmm. It, there's a part of me as, you know, one of those people who can remember when games were released 45 years ago <laughs> before I was born. Um, but there's something with me about seeing these, a lot of these publishers just abandon mm-hmm. all that old IP, right? Like, so we've seen it with Konami. Like Konami, you know, stopped making... Um, they stopped making uh, the Metal Gear Solid games. They stopped making uh, Castlevania. They stopped making Silent Hills. I know that they started making Silent Hill again. Um, and it was sad. You know, it was sad to see those games die. Like, I love new stuff, but, like, it's fun to check in. And, like, those games have persisted for those franchises have persisted because there's something to them. Mm-hmm. And to see Sega go back and say, okay, yeah, let's try again with these. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I wish more people were willing to take those sorts of risk. Mm-hmm. And uh, I hope it pays off for them. I hope that they end up being successful. You know, and it's, it's hard to imagine with all five, but like mm-hmm. even if three or four of them could be successful, mm-hmm. like I think you have to view that as a, as a win. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um yeah. Um, well, that does it for this episode. We will be back for one more episode this year, so next week. Um, and then we will go on hiatus for the Christmas break as we all scatter around different places. 
Um, and we also like allow our brains to like relax <laughs> and hopefully not think about anything at all for uh, a couple of weeks. Um, I just want to be in a vegetative state for, you know, at least two <laughs> or three days. <laughs> Um, so we'll have an episode next week and then we'll go on the break. But for now, uh, thank you to OJ, Mario and Alicia for joining me. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for putting in your request for more chaos. <laughs> chaos. <laughs> um, and we will be back next week. Uh, take care till then. Bye.